a welcome to the 2019 Hall of Fame Awards for uh, the Samueli School of Engineering, the Donald Brin School of Information and Computer Science, and uh, the Ken Janda School for Physical Sciences. Um, my name is Ed Hand. Many of you know me. Those of you that don't should probably remain that way. Um, I will be MC Ed to you tonight until my colleague MC Mariana comes up later in the evening. Uh, I will set a very low bar uh, so that she will shine at the end, and she's used to that. Um, is this an amazing place or what? Yeah, I, um, I'm glad you all applauded because when the deans get the bill, um, <laughs> I may be fired. But nevertheless, uh, I would like to thank somebody. We have in my opinion, the most amazing staffs uh, in our three schools, which, by the way, are the best three schools on campus. Um, there is no doubt. But uh, my colleague, close friend, and the person who did 95% of this work is Kristen Hurth. Kristen? Um, we had we try to set the bar higher and higher every year for the location. Guys, I don't think we can do it any better unless Marios takes us out in his boat. Um, so in any event, I want to tell you guys a little bit about this building. Uh, it's 76 years old. It was started, it, uh, construction started in 1942, ended in 1943. Um, the design here, which is interesting, the reason it is so large is because uh, when it was designed by, uh, I'm going to butcher this name, uh, da, 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 da. In fact, I'm going to butcher it so bad. Ah, Arshram Amerikanen, a nice Irish boy, as I like to say. Um, no, he uh, was a naval civil engineer who designed this building back in the early 30s for a uh, glimpse the size of the Hindenburg. So in 1937, after the disaster, we already had this design. We were going into war shortly. Um, so we use this design, even though it was built in 1942. Guys, this thing is a thousand feet long, 300 feet across. Um, let me do a little bit of math in my head. 6.8 acres. Right, Greg? <laughs> um, uh, da 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 da. 2.7 million board feet of Douglas fir from Oregon was used to construct it. 10 acres of plywood sheathing are over a snail. Um, believe it or not, the water table here is, is reasonably low. So this is actually marshy property. So below us there are 1,600 concrete piles 65 feet deep. So I think we're pretty, we're not going to go anywhere. Um, uh, during the war, this held six 246-foot-long airships equipped with depth charges and a 50 caliber machine gun. Uh, these airships, believe this kind of blew me away, they had a top speed of 78 miles per hour, but more importantly, a range of 2,200 miles. So uh, these were going up and down the coastline uh, looking for Japanese subs. Uh, now here's... Here's for all the engineers, math majors, and computer scientists. If you took all the wood in this building and cut it into strips one inch wide, any guesses as to how long it would stretch? Come on. It's impressive enough as it is. 7,000 miles, LA to New Zealand. Anyway, an impressive building and something that I think we should all be proud of here in the area. <clears throat> so, on to the more important things. I'm sorry, guys. Don't let me. Okay. Aren't these cute? Now I'll say what Kristen wanted me to say. Um, as you guys know, this is homecoming weekend. We will be out in the park tomorrow. Uh, it will be fun, and it will be nice. It will not be as nice as some of the other schools. But I can assure you the other schools aren't doing this tonight. Okay? So give us a break tomorrow. We're going to be tired. We're going to say hi, we won't remember who you are, but we will be friendly. But in any event, come tomorrow if you can. Um, 
We've done this now four years for engineering and computer science, and this will be the second year for physical sciences. And we had, uh, we've had a huge number of very uh, talented alums who have uh, been recognized. Whoop. Where's Tim? He would know how to do that. Um, but uh, we had this year, we're introducing four new honorees. But in the meantime, I would like all the folks, and I've seen a lot of you here tonight, to please stand who are past awardees. Come on. You can do it. Nice. Congratulations to all of you again. I mean, this is, this is an amazing work. And, to, and uh, I have to tell you guys, we're the only three schools on campus that do this. But of course, we are forward thinking and a lot smarter. But nevertheless, I won't, uh, I won't say much about that. Um, the uh, da, 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 Kristen wanted me to say, post your photos from this evening on Instagram and Twitter using the hashtag UCIHOF. Guess that would be UCI Hall of Fame. What? Oh, yeah, perfect. Okay, so enough of me. Um, again, thanks, guys, for coming. Uh, I'll be back blissfully shortly um, to just introduce some of our uh, speakers tonight. But congratulations to all the new awardees. And with that, I'm going to give you to one of my favorite deans, a man I've known for the whole time I've been at UCI. Uh, perhaps you guys know him as Ken Janda. Ken, I'm going to leave it with you, pal. All right, thank you, Ed. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. You've got to see this. Wow, what a group. Thank you so much for coming. And uh, I hope that every year our alums are a little more proud of where they came from. We are working very hard to increase the value of your degree year by year. Some of the great work that's been done by our faculty and students was on the screen tonight. They asked us to be fairly short. So one of the few things I'll say is for anybody who graduated, let's say the previous century, we're a much larger university. I came here in 92. Uh, just my school of physical sciences now has 170 faculty members. We added nine more this past year. They're doing such spectacular work. It just boggles my mind. And I beg you, when I send an email that has some of this great work in it, read it. Because uh, it's really, really wonderful. Uh, That's enough of that kind of stuff. I think let's get right down to the reason we're all here. So the first alum I would like to introduce is Jonathan Dorfin. Uh, he's there. So while Jonathan is walking up, I'll tell you that he completed his PhD in particle physics in 1976. He held a faculty position at Stanford University and was a director of the Stanford Linear Accelerator Center, one of the most famous accelerators in the world. And then he started a new university. That just boggled my mind. I heard out about it today. The Okinawa Institute of Science and Technology in, guess where? Okinawa, Japan. And he's a long-serving member of the Board of Governors of the Weizmann Institute of Science and a fellow of the American Association of Arts and Sciences and of the American Physical Society. So please join me in congratulating Dr. Jonathan Dorfman. Thank you so much. The second honoree from our school this evening, unfortunately, couldn't be here. She works in Washington, D.C. and just had some children, her H child. Her name is Maggie Walzer. She's Ph.D. Some Maggie fans? Great. 
So uh, she got a PhD in chemistry, but in actual fact, she was one of the inaugural graduate students of our new department, new at the time, Department of Earth System Science, doing her PhD jointly with uh, Professor Ralph Cicerone and others. So she is uh, an aerosol scientist. She's on the Council of the American Geophysical Union, president of Societal Impacts and Policy Science section. She's an AGU AAAS Congressional Science Fellow and works on water and energy policy and legislation for the U.S. Senate Committee on Energy and National Resources. And Maggie was one of my students, so I have to tell a personal story. I taught physical chemistry, quantum mechanics, which everybody really loves. And when I taught that class, I always found her paper and just wrote grading key on it. Because not only was it correct 100%, but it was so clearly written, it was amazing. So uh, accepting the award for Maggie tonight is Professor Sergei Niskorodov. And uh, do we have a, an actual award? <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Our third inductee, unfortunately, also couldn't be here tonight. Dr. Stephen K. Pollock, who receives his PhD in organic chemistry in 1980, and he's currently the senior staff research scientist at Carbon Inc., where he focuses on promoting life science applications of 3D printing. So I guess he's going to 3D print, 3D print little cells that are going to grow. He's uh, held faculty positions at the University of Cincinnati and Howard University, and he's worked at the U.S. Naval Research Laboratory and the U.S. Food and Drug Administration. And accepting for him tonight is our Professor Ken Shea, who is, has mentored several of our awardees tonight, or at least two of our awardees. Oh, good. <laughs> Found it. Okay, and our fourth awardee for the School of Physical Sciences 2019 is Dr. Li Wa Zhao. So, <laughs> Dr. Zhao also worked with Professor Kenneth Shea, Organic Chemistry and Material Science at UCI. She's currently a Hewlett Packard Distinguished Technologist and Director of the Advanced Materials Process. Research Lab at Hewlett Packard. She got, I forgot to say, her PhD was in 2006. And in 2017, Liwa was named one of the women, women worth watching in STEM. She is passionate about mentoring and developing young scientists and engineers, especially in women, women and minorities. And we all know how important that is for the future of science. So thank you for all your work. Professor, <laughs> Doctor, <laughs> congratulations. All right. All right, what a group. I mean, that's, I'll just say briefly that the thing that makes getting up in the morning so wonderful for just about every professor at UC Irvine is working with such great students. And now that we're celebrating their success, it's even more fun. So without taking any more of your valuable time, I'm going to call on Dean Marios Papamedio to introduce the inductees for the School of Information and Computer Science. Thank you, Ken. Uh, let's see. Um, welcome, everyone. Uh, is, is, is anyone called tonight? If you are called, I have some numbers for you. Chicago, 11 degrees. Uh, let's see. Ann Arbor, Michigan, uh, 
15 degrees. I left all my gloves and my parka and everything back there and I couldn't find them tonight, so I couldn't wear them. Uh, let's see, Washington DC, I think is a balmy 34 or something. Okay, well, uh, enough with that. Uh, again, welcome. Uh, as I was entering the building, Greg Washington, the Dean for the School of Engineering, told me that he's not gonna stick to the script. He's gonna go off script and say all sorts of ex exciting things about engineering. I told him we don't have time to do that. I, I, I'm not gonna tell you about the record number of applicants in ICS. It was 10,000 for fall of 2019. 18, wait, that was 18, that was a year ago. I'm not gonna tell you about all the hiring we've been doing in, in ICS because we don't have time for that. We hired a dozen faculty last year. We're hiring another 15 this year, another 12 the following year, another 10 the year after. Um, I'm not gonna tell you about the record number of students. I think 4,200, which is an eye-popping number. Uh, selectivity is pretty high for a pu public university. Uh, so none of this stuff, because we don't have time, I'm gonna stick to my script. So my script here has four inductees. I will start with Erin Brandner. Erin? Erin received her Master's of Science from ICS in 1998 and her PhD from ICS in 2001. Uh, her advisor was Gloria Mark. I know that Gloria is sitting somewhere in the audience. Gloria, thank you. Erin is a director and research sci scientist at Autodesk in, Inc. in San Francisco, where she helped found the, gen uh, the Generative Design Initiative and now manages Autodesk's robotics lab. Erin has led strategic research partnerships on manufacturing, automation, with institutes such as the US National Laboratory in Livermore and NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory. She has been a practicing user researcher for over 15 years. Her research has helped amplify human creativity through intelligent and intuitive technologies. Most recently, Erin managed user experience projects across several of Autodesk's engineering and design products. Erin has authored research in human-computer interaction with collaborators at Autodesk, IBM, Boeing, and AT&T, as well as co-author on patents in advanced design. She has been recognized for her lasting impact in the field of computer-supported cooperative work. Erin, congratulations. This is a shaky stage, by the way. Uh, our second inductee tonight is Gerald Bortis. <laughs> Gerald received his Bachelor's of Science in ICS in 2005, his Master's of Science in 2007, and his PhD in 2016. His advisor was the Professor Andre Vanderhoek. Andre is in the audience. Andre, if you can raise your hand. Thank you. <laughs> Gerald Bortis is Vice President of Software Development at NextGen Healthcare, a leading provider of healthcare technology solutions. Gerald manages a San Diego-based team developing NextGen Office, a web-based electronic health record and practice management system as well as a global development team of over 100 employees supporting numerous solutions that generate over 100 million in revenue annually. Daryl started his career as a software engineer with Mirth in 2005, where he was one of the founders of Mirth Connect, an engine now used worldwide to transfer and transform data between health information systems. He helped grow the development team and was instrumental in the acquisition of Mirth in 2013 by Quality Systems Inc., now NextGen Healthcare. Gerald, congratulations. <laughs> Our next inductee is Jim Bernie. Jim.
Jim received his Bachelor's of Science from ICS in 1989. He also received a BS in economics, uh, focusing on AI research. Remember, this was 30 years ago, before AI was you know, on the front page of the New York Times every day. In fact, back then it was the, the AI winter, I think it was called. So doing AI in the, in the 80s took a lot of, took a lot of guts. Uh, Jim is an Academy Award nominated freelance visual effects supervisor. His most recent works include visual effects supervising for Warner Brothers Aquaman. Sorry, and, Sorry about that. <laughs> oh yeah, that's okay, that's okay, you know. It's, it's all good. <laughs> and, and, and the Minecraft movie, no kidding, as well as legendary Pacific Rim 2. In 2013, uh, Jim started his own visual effects company, Warm Style, dedicated to high-level compo compositing, I didn't know that was a word, for feature films. Warm Style was responsible for nearly 100 shots for Divergent, a Lionsgate project where he acted as the principal visual effects supervisor. Previously, Jim was the president and head of studio for Pulse Evolution, a creatively driven digital production and IP company established to produce specialized, high impact applications of computer, computer generated human likeness for use in entertainment, life sciences, education, and telecommunication. Pulse was the company responsible for bringing Michael Jackson to the 2014 Billboard Awards show. Jim was awarded the UCI Lodge and Laurels Award in 2014. Jim, congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> Last but not least, Justin Ehrenkrantz. Justin? Justin received his Bachelor's of Science from ICS in 2002, his Master's of Science in 2004, his PhD in 2009. His advisor was Professor Richard Taylor. I know Dick is in the audience. If you could, oh, thank you. Uh, Justin is a Senior Vice President of Software Engineering at Major League Baseball, where he's, no, no kidding where his teams are responsible for delivering the core technology that supports the game. Previously, Justin was at Bloomberg. That's a different line of business, right? <laughs> as, as head of compute architecture in the office of the CTO. Clearly, he didn't have to do that for too long because, you know, it was, it was a great gig, I suspect. There, he helped lead the transformation of Bloomberg's underlying hardware and software infrastructure that powers the information flow for global capital markets. Justin is also a member of the Apache Software Foundation, where from 2005 until 2010, he served as director of the foundation. Justin has contributed to the development of the Apache HTTP server, Apache Portable Runtime, and Flood. Justin, congratulations. Now, uh, let me turn the podium over to my friend, uh, Greg Washington, the Dean of the School of Engineering. Thank you. How are you all doing today? <laughs> well, since, well, since uh, Dean Mario's kind of stole my thunder, settle in, it's gonna be a long ride. <laughs> no, I'm only kidding. I, I actually, no, no, I'm not. But, but um, you know, I am, uh, I'm going to do this a little bit differently. I'm, I am going to highlight some of the things that have happened in the school. I can't uh, see all of your faces in, for this short period of time and not do that. Um, but I'm going to ask you all to help me a little bit because it's actually pretty easy. Um, we too have record numbers of students coming into our program, over 17,000 uh, applications. And so our total number of applications are up. Uh, our research expenditures, new research awards and the like 
are, we hired our largest and most diverse class of faculty this year. We hired 14 uh, new faculty, and so our faculty numbers are, and all of that leads to something that's really important to us, our rankings as it relates to uh, a school of engineering. And our rankings are, actually no, our rankings are down. <laughs> we, but down in a positive way. <laughs> We're now the 21st ranked public engineering program in the country, uh, uh, number 35 overall. It's a really big deal. And that's the highest ranking the school has ever had. So on that note, I am going to bring forward the inductees uh, for the Engineering uh, Hall of Fame. First, Dennis Bilodeau. Dennis? Dennis <clears throat> received his BS in civil engineering in 1991. He is the chief of staff to supervisor Sean Nelson, where he manages traffic and development service for the County of Orange. In 2000, Dennis was elected to serve on the board of Orange County's uh, water district and is presently the longest standing board member at the Orange County Water District. He led the effort to design finance and build the world's largest water recycling facility, the groundwater replenishment system. The GWRS, as it is called, has received more than 50 awards, has been featured by prominent national and international media, and is hailed as the global model for water sustainability. It produces 100 million gallons of water per day which accounts for one third of the water supply for North and Central Orange. So you can all drink to that. <laughs> Dennis is a registered civil and traffic engineer. Please give him a hand. Next is John Gribble, BS 1983, Mechanical Engineering. John is the Director of Engineering for the Polaris Commercial Group, consisting of Taylor Dunn, GEM, and Pro XD work vehicles. He began his career at Taylor Dunn Manufacturing. In 2010, he took over uh, as Taylor Dunn's president until Polaris Industries purchased uh, the company in 2016. John has served as a judge for five years for the uh, Engineering Beal Student Design Competition and has orchestrated uh, the donation of 15 low-speed uh, vehicles. They're, they're not so low when the students drive them, um, but more on that later. <clears throat> And he, and he donated those vehicles for UCI's Energy Invitational uh, Competition. John earned his BS in uh, mechanical engineering and was honored as an outstanding mechanical engineering uh, student of the year upon his graduation. He holds an MBA from UCI as well. John? Next up, Laura Wright Teclamarium, BS 2004, Electrical Engineering. Laura is the lead project manager for at Electronic Arts Mobile, at, at Electronic Arts, managing a portfolio of over $200 million across EA's mobile platforms. She works Cross, she works cross-functionality to scope, the, define, and deliver EA's premier player experience. She has helped increase revenue for several products, including Star Wars Battlefront, Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes, Pogo, uh, Plants vs. Zombies, 
My favorite. <laughs> FIFA Mobile and Mirror's Edge, just to name a few. Prior to EA, Laura led the platform solution strategy and implementation for a $100 million mobile advertising company, Tapjoy. She also founded and ran her own marketing and advertising startup for seven years, which focused on sports and entertainment industries. Laura enjoys serving our next generational youth by being a board member of Game Heads, a nonprofit focused on exposing inner city youth to game development and technology. She received her BS of science in electrical engineering and a minor in computer science from UCI. Laura. And finally, last but not least, Ravi Valenti, BS 2002, Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering. During his mid-20s, Ravi left mechanical engineering, uh, mechan Ravi left mechanical engineering sector and began to pursue his passion for the arts. Performing in student uh, files and setting up a freelance K-12 uh, private tutoring uh, consultancy to teach various students. He found that both acting and teaching called upon interdisciplinary studies that he had cultivated at UCI's campus-wide honors program. As a young child, Ravi watched Star Trek, the original series, <clears throat> and the show inspired him to pursue both science and acting. He returned to the final frontier as a, Star, and, and as a Starfleet Academy cadet in the 2009 J.J. Abrams feature film, Star Trek. This month, he joined his partner, who's here with him today, Nina Sloan, in the world premiere of their supporting roles in the feature film, Overwhelm the Sky, at the 2019 San Francisco Independent Film Festival. His first lead role feature film, Devised, explores the ethics of technology and is soon to premiere. Ravi earned a double BS in mechanical engineering and aerospace engineering from the Sam Welly School of Engineering. Ravi. This concludes all of the engineering inductees. Please let me introduce you to engineering's very own Laura Wright. Am I? I'm 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 caught in a do loop right now, but. I will bring up Ed to continue the program. <laughs> Guys, thank you all again. This, these were great. Uh, what we do at this part of the program is we have one representative speaker uh, from each school come to speak because if all of them talked, it would take time away from my being able to speak. So um, as Greg said, Laura will be our first one. By the way, guys, Laura... Um, holds an important role, as you guys know, at Electronic Arts. Uh, she was able to host our alumni event at EA. Uh, Laura, when was that? Two years ago? Yeah, it only seems like last week. But um, in any event, as Andre will tell you, we have one of the best gaming programs on the planet at UCI. Tomorrow at homecoming, uh, the eSports Arena will have uh, seats available if you want to play games. Laura, not sure if EA is represented there or not, but in any event, Laura, come on up. No worries. How are you all doing? Good? Yeah? 
Uh, to Dean Marius, I know you were saying trying to make us feel bad for feeling cold. I was on business travel in Miami and came straight here, so I feel cold <laughs> just a little bit. Um, awesome. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm still in awe and this feels surreal. I feel like I'm in a dream in any minute. I'm going to wake up. Um, but first, let me just start by giving an honor to God. Thank you for waking me up every morning. And I uh, start with UCI's distinguished professors, faculty and staff, my fellow inductees, all of our family and friends that are here. Thank you. Thank you. Look to everybody that you know and love and care and just thank you for being here. It's an honor to represent the School of Engineering. And so I want to tell a little story. Um, it's going to start with an old African proverb, it takes a village to raise a child. How many of you ever heard of that? Awesome. And why I start with that proverb is that while I was at UCI, I was a young adult trying to figure out my place in the world trying to figure out how I can make an impact in bringing joy to people's lives. And, you know, taking back 2004, it doesn't seem like a long time ago. It's really not. Um, but just to help us remember that time, do you remember in 2004? Maybe let me help you out. So I think, like, the Boston Red Sox won, like, the first World Series since, like, 1918. You might remember Condoleezza Rice was nominated as Secretary of State. Um, and, oh, I remember this one. There was a small company starting a social platform at Harvard University. I think they're called Facebook. And so those are the things, the memories I remember. But I also remember um, a couple of memories for me, which was surviving the Lees. Uh, I think it was like Dr. Chen Lee and Dr. Henry Lee. And there was another Lee, which escapes me right now. But I remember going to their office hours, and they would spend their time with me, and um, just the amount of rigor that they put me through. And so what I'd say is I wasn't the smartest student um, in the School of Engineering, but I had determination to work hard, and I was going to make it to my final destination. And so I also remember people like, in my village, like Robin Jeffers, who's with me tonight. Hi, Robin. Um, Robin, she supported me when I needed help with things like tutoring and where do you go when you're trying to survive these rigorous classes. Um, when she was at the, the Center of Opportunities of Diversity and Engineering, aka I remember it as CODE. Um, thank you for that. Also another person, Kika Friend, who was part of CAMP, um, but also known as California Alliance for Minority and Participation. Uh, little do you know, so there was Professor Glenn Healy, I got to work on facial recognition back in early 2004, kind of how things all work out. Um, now we put facial recognition in our video games so that you can scan yourself and put yourself into the game. Yeah? So like if you ever, if you play video games and you ever want to see like if your husband pisses you off, you like can scan him, put him into the game, and you're like bang, bang, shoot him. No, no, just kidding. All right. Let me keep moving on here. So, you know, as... Um, I'd like to kind of end with the thought that UCI was my village in my undergrad. And as I continue to develop as a professional, getting ready to go out into the world with my new set of skills, um, I really appreciate how much the school has continued to invest in me back then and even now. And so as I've grown, I now will start to build my own villages not only with my children, but also with other leaders, whether here in UCI or others that are trying to develop in the space of video games and AI. And so um, I just want to thank UCI and everybody here, particularly Dean Washington and Assistant Dean Ed Han for continuing to invest in the UCI Engineering School. Um, it, it's really important, stories like mine and stories like the other inductees that we go into the world and continue the impact that we have. Um, without the school's mission, we wouldn't be where we are today. So with that, um, I thank you all for just giving me the opportunity to be here. I'm going to go get my blanket now, and hopefully you have a great rest of the night. Thanks, Laura. You're always awesome. <clears throat> the second awesome person will be Jim Burney, who will represent ICS. 
Um, for those of you that were here last year, it's interesting. Um, ICS, we always think about you know zeros and ones and algorithms and so on, but we really have you know, and Tim is here. We've got a ton of people in the entertainment industry. Last year, Howard Gersh, who was one of the special effects um, folks for all the Star Wars movies, was an inductee last year. So Jim sort of brings that tradition uh, another generation closer. So um, Jim, come entertain us. Hi, ICS. Uh, I don't know. I, I, am I supposed to start with a fun fact? I didn't get that memo, but I, I think you guys already had the answer to this one. It's how many times, if you were to fold a piece of paper in half, 42 times, how tall would it be? It'd go to the moon. You've never heard that. Anyway, um, it's truly an honor uh, to be inducted into this Hall of Fame. It, it really is. And I remember I got the news over around Christmas break. And I went to visit my dad, and he was the first person I told. And I told him, I got, you know, I got, inter, in, I'm being inducted into the Computer Science Hall of Fame for UCI. And he looked at me with just all this pride in his eyes, and he looked at me and he goes, Why you? <laughs> and I was just like, I was, I was thinking, because I'm awesome. And, but I wasn't always awesome. And, in high school, I struggled with C's. I barely got out of there with a C average. And I remember sophomore year, he was driving me to school, and he was probably grasping at straws. What am I going to do with this kid? He's the last of five. I just need to get him to 18, and I'll be good. And he goes, what about computers? And I'm like, computers, what's that? And I ended up going to a, a computer camp because it's you know, a really sexy thing to do for a teenager is go to computer camp during the summer. And I fell in love with programming. And when I got back, the next, I guess I'd be a junior, I took the only class that my high school offered for programming. And we actually used punch cards to program. And this is when they were already outdated. It's not like it was that long ago. And so I, I ended up, I wanted more. So I went to a junior college at night. I took night courses in college because I was such an overachiever. And I took night classes in uh, like programming Fortran and some other outdated languages. And, and it was pretty impressive for a you know, high school kid to do that. But, and, and that's usually where the story ends. Uh, but the truth be told, I got a D. So <laughs> I, I ended up going to a JC. I, did, I went to a junior college and I got my grades up and I got my language requirements fulfilled, and I got into uh, UCI. But I didn't get into the ICS program. I got into economics, which I loved, but I really wanted to also pursue computer science. And even at that time, it was a very competitive and very impacted program. And they worked with me. They, they said, you know, if you get these grades, you do these things, and here's your path to get into this program. And it was very difficult for me, but I, I worked very hard. Um, and it, that, that difficult that path was, it just made me really appreciate being there. And it felt really impressive I, to be part of something this big. And they had you know, wonderful professors who I see out here tonight. It's just the, the, what, we taught, what they taught us was just phenomenal. But they also gave us the ability to do research and actual work in you know, AI and software engineering. And it was actually that work, the software engineering stuff, oddly enough, that got me into the visual effects industry. Because at the time, you know, it's not just all fun and artsy fartsy. It's there was a it was all scripting and programming. And even my first thing I did was um, writing flocking algorithms and software for Batman, which got cut from the movie. <laughs> but. Um, <laughs> I remember there at the time the rendering we used RenderMan and it was just all kind of a C-based scripting language. It was all very techy, and there was only one guy who knew it at our at the studio I was working at, and he one day quit, and so it just fell into my lap. And there, I, you know, overnight I went from programmer to kind of artist. From there, from there I went to Sony that was just developing their visual effects company, and I, I it was almost like Fox. Foxhole programming. It was just spaghetti code, and we we're coding up for 
you know, huge blockbusters like Anaconda and everyone's favorite Starship Troopers. But Contact was pretty good. Contact is nice. And I created this pipeline for, you know, just basically, this is boring, but it's just taking, you know, stuff from this package to this package out to this package. But, um, and I remember afterwards, everybody's like, well, this should be our, our standard. I go, and, and I go, are you kidding me? Like, if my professor saw this stuff, they would cringe. I, I go, I mean, the commenting alone on it would get me back to that C average. And I remember for years after that, but I worked with the, the software department using my, you know, my software engineering prowess. We developed uh, a pipeline that they still use today. And I remember my goal was, I want to take a lot of this technology out. I want, to, I want most of our time to be spent in the artistry and the imagery. But you know, 20 years later, still to this day, we're always pushing those boundaries. It's always very technical. And I'm always relying back on those things that I learned here. Um, I think it was last summer, the head of special projects for Warner Brothers, they're doing all this AR, VR, MR stuff. And they're looking at coming up with a standardization of data acquisition, usability, future proofing, the storage, and et cetera. And they wanted to come up with a spec that the whole industry would adopt. So who do they call? They call this guy. And, and it's because of you know, my software engineering background. It truly was. Um, so, I mean, what's the point of all this and where am I going? I think, you know, opportunity favors the prepared. And, and I'm paraphrasing Louis Pasteur, but UCI gave me that opportunity. They gave me the opportunity to turn, turn my education around. They gave me the opportunity to get into the visual effects business. And it was the ICS department that prepared me for the challenges that I'd meet head on and be successful in it. Um, so I'm, I'm truly grateful, and I want to thank everybody um, on behalf of all the inductees for this honor, and, and thank you for making us all awesome. Thank you. My close personal friend, Lois, will be the next speaker. Uh, she's amazing, even though she is in physical sciences, but nevertheless, my third favorite school. They want thank you. Come on up. Yes, um, my name's Li Hua Zhao. <laughs> Just be, uh, um, I am very much thrilled and honored to be here today and to be part of all of you. And this is really tremendous to me. And as an international student start from this place, when I just came in, I thought I'm very well prepared with my English and everything. But when I arrived, I don't even know how I'm actually capture a real cab to get to the UC Irvine. And I realized how unprepared I was. But even though I feel I'm so unprepared, I go to classes, I still remember the first day classes. I sit in, I can hear every single word, but I cannot really put all those sentences together. What does that really mean to me? And if I'm making a note, and I couldn't hear what professor really says, when I hear what he really says, I couldn't make a note. And this kind of like back and forth as kind of seems like a bad circle goes around and around. But I made it through. And it really is because of the courage I get from all my classmates, importantly the professors, and of course a lot of UCI staff. Even though they could not really understand what I was talking about, but they actually tried. They gave me opportunity to let me try to explain what I need. And what they can actually offer to me. So all in all, I feel like my journey was a little bit bumpy from the beginning to be able to actually speak, listen, and work with my schoolwork and graduate work and being able to conduct the research to the way, finish my PhD. I think the day I finished my defense, my professor is there, I don't know how much I actually proud of myself, 
but I definitely know my professor Ken was very proud of me. Um, it's really, I remember the time we actually have our, um, what is called, qualification exam. It's been a while. Um, and I was really panicked, you know, how I'm going to be conduct this um, defense or, or actually the time is called closed door qualification exam. And when I was in the hallway, my classmate actually told me, are you nervous? And all of a sudden I realized it's not just me nervous, everybody else nervous to be in that room. And that gave me the confidence as well. It's like, okay, everybody is on the same journey to actually continue to do the good and drive the excellency to get to the next destination we want to be. I remember, um, well, actually not remember, two days ago I was talking to my 10 years old. I said, I'm going to be a speaker. I probably, you know, need to do some speech preparation. And she turned around, she said, Mommy, I don't think you need it. You know, just speak with your heart. I said, okay, that sounds great to me. So I really like to really say it is such a privilege and an honor to be recognized by the university that made big difference and impact on my life. And to me, one important lesson I learned from the UCRI is really take the challenge to be at, as a problem to solve. And the professor, not just Ken, and a lot of other professors who being teaching to all the classes and create the environment to be open and openly discuss and debate new ideas and inclusive and doesn't matter where you come from, what language you really speak, as long as you have a great idea and you're willing to take on a challenge and solve problems, there is a space for you. And that, to me, has made a tremendous impact on my career moving forward. So I am at HP Labs and leading 3D printing. So physical science could be really cool. Yeah, um, really. Um, it's, uh, to me, it's all of these learning and journey going, you know, fight with the challenges and solving the problems and find the passion, we, what things we want to do, is very important. And I'm going to carry on all this and continue my journey. Thank you. And very much honored to be here. And congratulations to all the inductee tonight. And I'm proud to be part of you. Thank you. So this is my last chance to speak with everybody. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I was waiting on that. I only have a couple of more things to say. Um, bios and pictures are on the website. A slide will appear with a link. Uh, yeah, we are one of the state's leading institutions of science and technology. Don't ever forget that. Um, Guys have been in this business for many, many, many years, and I've had lots of other MCs, but I have to tell you, I was on the search committee who helped hire this person. Um, it will be a fitting tribute to this event to end with her. So without any further ado, and I'll speak with everybody. Pat, got one to pick over with you. Um, I will bring up my friend, Mariana. Good evening, everyone. Thank you so much to all of our guests who have come from near and far to join us this evening. My name is Mariana Lacusis, and I'm the Executive Director of Advancement for the School of Physical Sciences, so I am Ed's counterpart. Um, congratulations again to the co newest cohort inducted into our Alumni Hall of Fame. Before we continue with our festivities, I would like to ask that you join me in a toast. For those that do not know, the School of Physical Sciences fearless leader of the past eight years, 
Dean Ken Janda is retiring at the end of this academic year. Under his leadership, our school has attracted top faculty and graduate students to its programs, watched its rankings climb, and seen its international reputation in research and teaching soar. He has also been a passionate champion for equity, diversity, and inclusion. His vision and commitment reaches far beyond the physical sciences. He has played an integral role in the establishment of the Interdisciplinary Sciences and Engineering Building, which our three schools share and will open in 2020. With that in mind, let's all please raise a glass to Dean Ken Janda. Thank you for everything, Ken. Cheers. Thank you. So the evening is not done. We have great desserts. We have nitrogen popcorn, all kinds of delectable treats uh, for you all to enjoy. We want to thank you all for engaging with us and zot, zot, zot. <laughs>